Are you confident when it comes to image editing? Or do you feel intimidated and overwhelmed in the digital darkroom? In this week's episode, we teach you five editing hacks that will make your life so much easier. We've brought five images that each has some kind of unique problem, and we're going to show you how to fix them with some really cool image editing hacks. But before we do that, I just want to quickly thank this week's episode sponsor, Camera Canada. Camera Canada has been a fantastic friend to the Bird Photography Show, and they can be your friend too. If you're looking for a new camera or new lens, head on over to Camera Canada, mention that the Bird Photography Show sent you, and they will give you a great deal on your next camera purchase. So the first image of this rainbow orchid that I actually took in my tiny backyard with a painted background doesn't exactly have a problem, but I thought it's a perfect example to teach you a very unique problem, and that is Sometimes the birds to find a left in the frame, to low in the frame, to high in the frame, and we need to add a little bit of canvas to our image. So let's say in this image we wanted to add some background at the top. I would simply expand the frame, and then I would usually use the clone tool, or how would you do it if you just need to add a little bit of canvas and you have a nice blurry background? Yeah, so if it was a nice blurry background, I would use the rectangular marquee tool. I would select the new canvas, and I would just probably use the content aware fill tool. Usually on a smooth background like that, that'll just do it in one click and you're done. That's how I would do it. So there's two great ways of doing it. You can use the clone tool or the marquee rectangular tool, select the area and do content aware fill. But what would you do if you actually had to add canvas at the bottom of this frame? There's all these tweaks, all these branches. It's suddenly a lot more complicated, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, this is a perfect example with all those little kind of leaves on there. That's going to be really hard for any of the previous ones. If it was just a single branch, then I think the content aware fill would potentially still do a good job. But in this case, you're going to need a different technique. It's definitely a unique challenge because all these little tweaks and none of the automated tools will do a good job. It will just look really crazy. The clone tool is not going to work. So what can we do? If we're actually not wanting to add too much at the bottom, there's a pretty cool trick you can use. You can expand the frame to the bottom. I usually do that with the crop tool. And then I use the marquee rack angular tool as well. And I select a good chunk of the bottom of the frame. And then I hold down the shift key, click with the left mouse button on the little marker on the rack angular tool and start pulling it down, stretching out the frame until the gap is filled. And if you're not overdoing this, this will give you a fantastic result. Absolutely. So overall, with these different techniques we've shown you, you don't have to be sort of imprisoned by however you shot the image. If it's not a good composition and you need some extra canvas, now you have the tools to make it happen. And you can actually use that trick also on the blank canvas because you can just select a good chunk of the background, pull it up, and it will be filled very easily. All right, so our second image we're gonna look at is of this really beautiful noisy pitta. This is a bird that Jan and I were actually shooting together in Australia a few months ago. And the problem with this bird is he's got this little light blue shoulder patch and it is so bright so much brighter than the rest of the bird and it really presents some challenges that arm patch is just like a, a hole in the bird basically so we have to find some unique ways of actually recovering that if there's maybe some detail in those blues we can basically double process the raw file we can process the raw file once to be how we actually want the overall image to look, but we're just ignoring that really bright blue patch. Then we go back to that original raw file, we process it again, only this time we're processing it for how we want the, the really bright blue patch to look. So we're going to pull back the whites, pull back the highlights, and then we're going to go back into Photoshop and we're going to overlay those two and we're going to mask in the detail in the blue part of the image. And this might all sound very complicated, but it's actually really not, especially once you learn the basic skills of layer masking. Once you really understand how to use layer masking to open up all these new avenues, it's really not that complicated. And this is also why Glenn and I love Photoshop, because doing these things in Photoshop is really, really easy. Whereas if you do that in Lightroom or other programs where you can't have as good masking or can stack certain photos on top of each other, it's much more difficult. So then once you've got that really bright blue arm patch sorted out, we'll just continue on with our normal workflows that Jan and I both teach you at Jan's masterclass video in my eBooks. And that's also where you can really learn and really perfect those techniques. So the next image I brought is this really nice shot of a male ganging cockatoo eating berries in a hawthorn bush. And I like pretty much everything about it, except for 
Can you guess what I didn't like, Glenn? Well, it's pretty obvious. There's a few blades of grass that I'd probably rather not have in the image. Absolutely, and so we want to teach you how to remove these. Obviously, the ones on the background are pretty easy. What I would usually do, I would just separate them from the edge of the frame and then cut them in a couple more pieces with the clone tool. And then you can circle them, use content aware fill, or you can circle them and do the, use the patch tool and drag it onto another area. I think the main thing here is if you're not separating it from the edge of the frame, these automatic tools usually do a weird job and kind of smush it around. So that's why you need to separate it from the leaves at the bottom and the top of the frame to go to get a clean result there. But Jan, I'm sure the viewers right now are saying that's the easy part, <laughs> cloning, cloning the sticks out of the background. Tell us how you did the sticks that are going over the actual bird itself. So that was obviously a little bit more of a challenge. And just what we said, you actually need to cut it in really small portions here, basically just the size of the one feather where you want to remove it from. That's exactly what I did. I used the clone tool to chop these sticks up in a lot of small pieces. And then I used the patch tool, circled each little piece and dragged it onto another bit of feather that matched that same sort of shape and area and color. And then once I've done all that, it still looks a little bit messy. So now I actually need to use the clone tool to kind of rebuild those white feather edges because all the sort of patch tool content aware feel, they can't exactly create the lines that I need to create. So I cut everything in small little pieces, separate it from the background. And then I, you can use content aware fill or the patch tool to just fill in the gray feathers basically. And then you need the clone tool to actually clone around the edges and make it look really nice. So this took a little bit of time, maybe five or 10 minutes to clean up this whole bird. But once you know how to do it, it's actually not that difficult and it's very, very useful because now we go from this weird sticky image to this beautiful looking image without any sticks. So the critical skills in this case are understanding the different cloning tools. So we have the clone stamp, the patch tool, and then also using the content aware fill. And as we discussed, cutting the object up and separating it into manageable chunks. And once you learn how to use those tools properly and you break it down into small little parts, it's actually not that hard. Okay, so for our next file, we've brought an image here of a tricky colored bird. You've been there, maybe a really bright yellow bird or a really bright <laughs> red bird. You open up that file in Adobe and it's very disappointing. Adobe can have a really hard time with bright reds and bright yellows. Definitely, I've had my fair share of red birds in Australia. The worst bird I usually come across, and it's actually a bit similar to the cardinal, is just a king parrot. It's just so red, it's almost impossible to get the colors right and to have the details in there. So in the past, and the only way I figured out how to do it, is you go into the color mixer menu in Lightroom or Camera Raw, and you start to slide around all the sliders, hue, saturation, luminance, and eventually you get to decent sort of starting point, but it's definitely a lot of effort to do that on every single image every time. And that problem is exactly why Jan and I created our pro sets. And that's why we have in our pro set packs, a tricky reds pack. This is the perfect solution for a bird like this. All I have to do one click using one of our tricky reds pro sets and the reds look fantastic. So instead of spending a bunch of time sliding all those different hue, saturation, luminance for different colors all around, not only does it take time, but you have to know what you're trying to get it to. In this case, you can just quickly sample a few of the different red options, pick the one you like and move on. And this may sound like an ad, and I guess it kind of is, but at the same time, we do use these every day because they make our editing life so much easier. Now, instead of sliding all these thousand sliders around every time, there's basically a perfect solution right there in the profile menu, one click and it gets you where you want to be. So I think it's worth checking these out. The other day, a client of mine asked me to edit one of his broad build mod mod images from Costa Rica, probably a bird that you've seen before as well. And it's a mm -hmm. really nice shot. The raw file was very dark. There was very little detail on the kind of thick perch. And there was this big leaf kind of right next to the bird. And what I want to teach you today is how you can deal with that big leaf and the fat chunky perch, because there's a funny tool called the liquefier in Photoshop. You go to filters, liquefy. And then in there, there's all these different tools that allow you to shrink things, push things around and just make them look a little bit nicer. So you just have to be a little bit careful. If you overdo it, it will look weird and you get sort of stretch marks on your image. But if you do it right, like on this leaf, I can just go in and I can just shrink it a little bit and then clean it up with the clone tool. And suddenly the big leaf is a lot more pleasant. 
And actually on this image, what I also did to get the details in the purge, I used the two raw method that we talked about earlier because I did one raw file for the overall photo. And then I developed another raw file. Instead of going dark, this time I went very bright, pulled up the shadows, pulled up the blacks to give me a file that allowed me to get more details into the blacks on the purge. Then I run my normal workflow from my masterclass on the file. And at the end, I just felt like the purge is still very chunky. It's quite thick, quite long and very straight. So I went into the liquefier again and I just pushed it down, pushed it up, bent it around a bit and then just got a purge that I thought overall looked a little bit better. So the important thing here is to invest some time into learning a basic set of skills that you can then add on to as you develop your skills in the digital darkroom. And then you can make your images look exactly like you want them to be. Because let's be honest here, there's all these endless possibilities, there's endless filters, whatever in Photoshop, but I think you're the same. We basically do the same thing to most of our images. We're not going to yeah. just randomly grab 55 different tools every time and see what they do. We have a pretty yeah. basic workflow that we teach you and that actually step by step kind of does the same thing to most images. And then there's just a few extra tools like the liquefier clone tool that we apply if we need to, but it's not something that we do on every single photo. No, the way to think about it is you want to develop a basic workflow that you do on most images, as you said. And then when you get the end of that workflow, you think, is there anything else? Essentially, you can think of it as a global adjustment, even though some of those things might be slightly localized. Yeah. And then at the end, you're thinking, OK, there's this thing in the background or this missing feather or, you know, I want to select this part of the image and make that a bit brighter. So in the end, you just want to have a basic workflow and then you can build on that with all these different tools as much as you want. So we definitely want to hear from you guys as well. What are the biggest challenges for you when it comes to image editing? Is it the raw processing? Is it the working on the file in Lightroom or Photoshop? Are you not quite sure where to get started and where to push the file to? Let us know in the comments because that will be very interesting. And now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, the photo of the week. Thank you so much guys for hashtagging your images with the hashtag bird photo show. The first image that stood out to me amongst almost 20,000 images now was of this Dartford Warbler by Steve Bostock. And I thought it was just a really nice image. It's kind of a busy perch, but it's also working really well because the bird's sitting in like the perfect spot on the perch. You can't see the tail, but I also wasn't really bothered by it because I really just like the curious pose kind of with a little bit of the crest up almost on the bird. and. The only thing I would want to do to this image is add a little bit more saturation to all the needles and the bird. And I think then it would be a real standout because overall it feels a tiny bit flat to me. I love these more complicated perches, these busier perches, especially when they look mm. super natural like this, because this doesn't necessarily scream like a setup. It might have been, I don't know, but I, I really like yeah. this, this shot. So definitely a good pick for that for that one. Okay, so the first image that I selected this week is of this really cool coot running along the water by Bijou PJ. And I just like, I just love the action in this shot. Coots are so cool how they run along the water and they, they can't seem to get airborne for a little while. And so if you have a good opportunity like he had here, this just gives you such a great chance to get these really cool like running on water type of shots. And I just think they did a great job of capturing this. Totally. What's also cool that both of the legs are kind of horizontal, not even touching the, the water. It's just a really cool shot. Obviously, the only thing here is I'm not the biggest fan of the crop in this case. I feel like it would feel nicer in a horizontal crop. I know that's a problem on Instagram, but it just feels like it's kind of right at the edge of the frame. But For overall, sure. a very, very nice image. The second image I picked is by JS Wildlife. Forgive me, I'm not saying the full name here. And I just really liked it. It's from a floating height, he's saying in the description. So that's really cool. And it that gives you this really low, really intimate angle in some beautiful golden light. And I just liked it. And it kind of just looks cute and almost like it's smiling, that little great crested creep. Yes, very cute shot. And if you look at if you look at this photographer's profile picture, you know this is somebody who likes to get down low on the ground and get that low angle shot. So good job with this one. It's a it's there's not much to say for me. It's it's a very cute little shot that everybody would kind of enjoy looking at. Baby, baby ducks, baby grebes, baby little <laughs> birds. Everybody loves those shots. So nice job on this one. My second image I brought this week is by Birds by KSW, and it's of this beautiful golden browed chloroformia. And this is a shot that I'm jealous of. There's obviously this flowering and fruiting plant that they enjoy eating because I've seen 
several images kind of like this. And yeah. I'm jealous because I've never had an opportunity <sighs> like this. It's one of the one of the coolest birds in Costa Rica or in Central America. And this is just a great shot. Such a uh, almost busy but very beautiful perch with the different colors of the berries and the bird is spectacular and the background's very nice. So overall, just a fantastic image as far as I'm concerned. It's very nice. There's one sort of weird patch on the bird's cheek that I would probably just clon out to make it look a little bit more perfect. In a perfect world, I would also love to see the bird's legs, but this is really nitpicking at a very high level. And I think it's just a very, very nice image of all. Definitely. All right, Jan, what have you got for us for your last image this week? The last image I picked is by Time Smuggler, and I just like the shot. It's a really nice low angle. It's probably on the edge to some sort of wetland or something. It has a nice background. I like the light on it, and I just thought it was an all around nice image. The orange feet, the bright yellow beak, the red eye, the black bird. It just kind of felt very nice overall. Yeah, I, I like the shot. I like the background and the bird, like all the technical aspects I really like. The only thing I'm not crazy about is actually the sort of foreground being this sort of just, it's not like that appealing, the mud to me. I would love to see a few little plants or blades of grass or something in there. Again, we're nitpicking. I know that might not have been available, but just in terms of sort of the actual habitat, almost like in this case, the perch is the mud and the perch to me is not that appealing. So next time you need to bring a few little flowers, Time Smuggler. <laughs> okay, so my last image this week is by Birding with Simon, and it's of this beautiful azure kingfisher. Again, a, a photo I'm jealous of because I've not ever seen this bird. And it's just a really nice, simple portrait. A cool little broken off perch, nice pose, shows the bird really well, nice background. Just a very classic, clean portrait of a beautiful bird. It's looking great. If we were nitpicking, we could probably work on those couple chest feathers on the front of the bird. But other than that, I think it's a fantastic looking image. Very well done, Simon. And with that, that just about wraps it up for this week. We hope you've enjoyed these editing tips, these editing hacks, and that they'll make your life in the digital darkroom a little bit easier. Totally. So let us know how you go with your image editing. Give us a thumbs up for the video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to the channel. And we will see you very soon. Bye, guys. See you next time, guys.